The new star was faint at first, little more than a glimmer in the summer dusk. But as the Romans gathered to celebrate Caesar's funeral games, it blazed brilliantly, a sign, it was said, that the great man's soul had joined the gods. For seven days it was visible over the tile roofs and umbrella pines, a rival to the setting sun. Then it faded, with the majesty befitting a god, into the shimmering calendar of the heavens. Although a few scholars flirted with heliocentrism, virtually all Greeks and Romans accepted that the earth occupied the center of the universe. Around the earth revolved the seven planets, named for the gods. First came the moon, near enough for its distance to be estimated by parallax during eclipses. Beyond were Mercury, Venus, and the sun, which Aristotle described as a globe of luminous ether. Then Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, all embedded, like the other planets, in spheres that carry them around the Earth in a geometric dance of orbits and epicycles. The outermost sphere of the universe carried the stars, which the definitive ancient catalog grouped into 48 constellations. The Greeks had identified some stars with figures from myth from a very early period. Homer, for example, mentions the Pleiades. But the division of the entire night sky into constellations seems to have taken place only in the 4th century BC. Of special significance were the twelve constellations of the zodiac, aligned with the tracks of the planets along the ecliptic. The zodiac had first been defined in Mesopotamia, where scholars had observed the heavens for millennia, keeping careful records of eclipses, planetary motions, and other phenomena. In the wake of Alexander's conquests, these records became accessible to Greek astronomers, along with the Babylonian tradition of using the motions of the planets to foretell the future. Before we discuss how this brought about the birth of astrology, a brief word about this video's sponsor. Blinkist is an app that helps you understand the most important things from more than 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts by reading or listening for just 15 minutes. After gazing up at the stars during my recent Alaska trip, I made learning more about astronomy one of my New Year's resolutions for 2023. On Blinkist, I found a very helpful overview of Welcome to the Universe, an introduction to astrophysics by Neil deGrasse Tyson, Michael Strauss, and J. Richard Gott. I was so enthused about Welcome to the Universe that I used the new Blinkist Connect feature to invite a friend onto my Blinkist premium plan for no extra charge and shared the book with them. When you use Blinkist Connect, you keep two separate accounts and only share what you want when you want. To quickly understand the most important parts of Welcome to the Universe and thousands of other nonfiction books, try Blinkist. To get 25% off a premium subscription and two memberships for the price of one, click on the link in the description and start your seven-day free trial now. Back to the stars. Astrology was born from the fusion of Babylonian astronomy with the methods of Greek science. It seems to have originated in Hellenistic Alexandria, probably around the end of the 2nd century BC, when new developments in Greek scientific astronomy were being fueled by the translation of Mesopotamian records. Like its modern descendants, ancient astrology attempted to determine outcomes from the positions and interrelations of the planets and the signs of the zodiac. With knowledge of an individual's birth date, astrologers claimed that they could chart the whole future course of a life and pick the most propitious time for undertaking anything from a voyage to a bath. Although some doubted that the stars influenced human affairs, pointing, for example, to the fact that twins born in the same place and under the same stars often led very different lives, most Greeks and Romans regarded astrology as a natural and legitimate extension of astronomy. Astrologers were especially popular in early imperial Rome, where they became confidants of the emperors. Augustus put Capricorn, his zodiac sign, on his coins. Scorpio, Tiberius's birth sign, became the emblem of the Praetorian Guard. Hadrian considered himself a master of astrology and foretold the hour and day of his death. 
another emperor married a lady whose horoscope predicted she would become a queen. The astrological manual of Maternus, who wrote during the 4th century, illuminates the degree to which the stars were thought to govern mortal lives. According to Maternus, for example, any man born in the first degree of Libra will be handsome and lovable. If the ascendant is in the feminine stars, unfortunately, he is destined to be a male prostitute, but one loved by all for his charm and sophistication. Those born in the seventh degree of Libra, Maternus continues, will be captured by pirates at some point, or possibly devoured by wild beasts. Those born in the twentieth degree will be great doctors, unless Mars is in that degree, in which case they are doomed to fall from a great height. To move to a different sign, those born in the first degree of Sagittarius will be pious and just, but those born in the second degree are sure to be ill-tempered, sacrilegious liars. Occasionally, Maternus is quite specific. Those born in the tenth degree of Capricorn, for example, will be charming adulterers who will seduce all their friends' wives but never be caught. Their own wives, however, will be equally adulterous. They will become rich and die abruptly. Understandably, in the view of such dire predictions, Roman parents took care to note when their children were born, sometimes stationing a man with a gong to inform a wedding astrologer of the exact moment. Doctors studied astrological manuals to determine the moon's effects on the human body. Philosophers hailed astrological predictions as manifestations of omnipotent fate. The seven laps in a standard chariot race and the seven degrees of Mithraism were patterned on the seven planets, as was the seven-day week we still use, each of its days named for the planet that governed its first hour. During the early imperial era, astrologers were repeatedly expelled from Rome, largely from fears that their predictions would encourage plots against the emperors. Later, when the Roman world became Christian, they fell under suspicion again, since the idea that the stars influenced human affairs seemed to contravene divine omnipotence. Astrology, however, outlasted the emperors and their anxieties, and enjoyed unprecedented prestige during the Renaissance, when astrologers were employed by popes and kings. Despite comprehensive debunking of its principles and practices, astrology is with us still, an uncanny offspring of Greek science. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. See the link in the description to subscribe. Check out my two other YouTube channels, Scenic Roots of the Past and Told in Stone Footnotes. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting Told in Stone on Patreon. You might also enjoy my book, Naked Statues, Vec Gladiators, and War Elephants. Thanks for watching.